Hey, this video serves as an introduction to the EU cosmetic products regulation. So in Article 1, you find scope and objective, and basically the regulation covers all cosmetics sold in the EU. Article 2, you find definitions, but in short, if you sell hair care, skin care, dental care products, quite likely that it goes within the scope of the cosmetic products regulation. You can find more details in Article 2. Now, the regulation is quite extensive in the sense that it covers safety assessments, meaning that your product must undergo a review before you can start selling. You need to comply with substance restrictions. You need to have a responsible person. You need to comply with GMP requirements. You need to submit a notification before you start selling. You need to have documentation in place. The packaging must be correctly labeled and the product must be tested. A keystone, uh, sorry, a, a cornerstone of the regulation is uh, the substance restrictions. And you find these in Annex 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Annex 2 prohibits the substances. These cannot be included in your bill of substances. Annex 3, restricted substances can be used for some product type, such as, uh, say, hair care products, or they cannot be used for certain product types. So you need to understand these restrictions. Annex 3 is absolutely crucial. Annex 4 is a bit different. It lists the substances that you can use as colorants. If it's not on the list, it cannot be used. So in short, understanding substance restrictions is the key to ensuring compliance with the regulation. If you would include substances that are banned, restricted, not on a positive list, you cannot pass the safety assessment and as such you can sell the product. So you absolutely have to get this right. Let's look at the labeling requirements or packaging labeling to be specific. You will need to include information about the responsible person. I will get to that in a bit. Content information, weight, volume, durability, precautions uh, to be observed in use. And these cannot just be any precautions. They are connected to what you find in Annex 3 and 6. Okay, and that's just the substance restriction annexes that I just mentioned. Batch number, cosmetic product function, and a list of ingredients. Let's look at the responsible person. So this is another very important concept to understand. The responsible person is usually not an individual. It would, in most cases, be a company, okay? A manufacturer, an importer, distributor, a person in the EU that is designated by a manufacturer or importer. They're very clear that it has to be established. This responsible person has to be established within the EU. The responsible person is well, responsible for various different aspects of, of, of uh, this regulation, ensuring that the labeling is correct and uh, so on. But perhaps the most important is that of the safety assessment. The responsible person must ensure that all products, well, all cosmetic products, have undergone a safety assessment. Now, safety assessment is... Um, essentially a combination of substance testing and reviewing labeling files and other aspects of the compliance procedure. This in turn is then meant to generate a report that's called the cosmetic product safety report and it's split up in two parts. So part A, what you see in front of you now, this is issued, this is created by the responsible person and broadly relate to the ingredients. So this is something that you fill out, that you create, you create this document. The second part, part B, is issued by a qualified safety assessor. Now the qualified safety assessor is in most cases a chemical engineer specialized in the field of cosmetics working for a third party testing company like SGS, Intertech, Eurofins, TUV, Rhineland, and so on. And this person will review label files, will manage the testing procedure and also review the, the lab test reports, look at the formulation and assess if it's compliant with the, the different restrictions and so on. And that is the basis of part B. So 
in a way, your product has to be certified by an external party before you can start selling it. Somewhat similar to the way a notified body would uh, have to issue an EC type examination certificate for medical devices, for example. So what this means is that you cannot place products on the market entirely based on your own assessment. Now, that being said, we have not found any statement saying that the safety assessor could not be an in-house employee, but the way that we see our customers manage this, it's, it's, it's very common that they go to third-party companies like SGS and Intertech, and then they have staff that act as the qualified safety assessor. Now, once this is done, it's time to move on to notification. And that's what you find here on the notification requirements. So the responsible person must submit information through the Cosmetic Products Notification Portal, CPNP. This is, concerns product name, the inf information about the responsible person, country of origin, information about the substances, and so on. Now, they are, there are requirements that apply to nanomaterials but that is not covered in this video. Let's look at other requirements. So in order to not spend three hours uh, recording this video, I will not cover every single aspect, but I will mention them. So in addition to the report I just mentioned, you also need to have a product information file. You can find the information that must be included in this file in Eurolex in the regulatory text for the cos cosmetic product regulation. So it's all there. You also need to follow certain GMP uh, procedures. And this can in practice uh, be a matter of documenting the, man the, the production lines, having written procedures for ensuring that the cosmetic products are not contaminated. How do you verify that the correct ingredients are used in, in the manufacturing process and so on? Hygiene, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You find more information about GMP within the context of cosmetics in the regulation on the Eurolex website. Product claims that are, let's say, conditions, restrictions for what you can claim about the product. You cannot claim anything. Um, when it comes to, let's say, anything that could mislead the consumer, anything that cannot be backed by data and testing. Instructions and warnings. And I also want to highlight that warning texts and instructions are never an accepted substitute for non-compliance. You cannot decide that you want to include substances that are banned or restricted and then apply a warning label to mitigate that. That's not the way it works, but there are some situations when it's required and you find more information in the Eurolex. Finally, it's also the animal testing ban with some exemptions. Okay. Now, other than the cosmetic product regulation, there's a number of other EU regulations and directives that you need to be aware of. First, we have the REACH regulation. Now, the REACH regulation, it's a substance regulation in the sense that it sets bans, restrictions, reporting requirements, not entirely different from what I just described. The difference, though, is that REACH applies to all consumer products in the EU. Recently, though, in late 2023, um, they published the first requirements, the first addition under Annex 17 of REACH concerning the restrictions and ban of microplastics, specifically for different types of cosmetics, rinse off cosmetics and so on. So we know that there is there are some situations in which REACH is highly relevant also for cosmetics. Then there's also the CLP regulation that sets uh, certain requirements for labeling of some substances, the aerosol dispenser directive, that will be relevant if you sell cosmetics such as um, hairspray, for example, when you have an aerosol dispenser, and the GPSR. And the GPSR, General Product Safety Regulation, applies broadly to all products in the EU, not just cosmetics, but there are labeling requirements, basic safety principles, and documentation requirements to be aware of. 
Okay, that was everything I have to say. I hope this served as at, at least uh, at least an introduction to the cosmetic product regulation and other regulations that are relevant to cosmetics in the EU. You can find more guides uh, on compliancegate.com that relate to cosmetics in the EU and also many other product categories.